What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel where I teach people all about Linux and how to break into tech. And today we're diving into something really cool and that's setting up an AI development environment on Linux using TensorFlow or PyTorch. I mean, if you're thinking about getting into AI or machine learning, but worried it might be a little over your head, trust me, it's not as crazy as it sounds. And I got you covered in this video. We're going to walk you through getting your Linux machine ready for some serious AI development. And I'm talking TensorFlow, I'm talking PyTorch. I mean, the stuff you see all those AI geniuses flexing on Twitter, but we're not just gonna install it and walk away. Nah, we're going to understand what we're doing because that's what we do here at the Keep It Techie channel. We don't just copy paste, we learn, we level up and we do it all together. So let's get it. Okay, so before we dive head first into the tutorial, let's take a 10,000 foot view of what we're about to do. Setting up an AI development environment on Linux isn't just slapping some commands into the terminal. You got a few moving pieces to keep in mind, like CUDA, the drivers for your GPU, and ensuring Python libraries play nice together. It's like assembling a high-tech puzzle, except this one can teach machines to learn on their own. Pretty dope, right? But first off, why Linux? I mean, come on. If you're still developing on Windows, I respect you, but why? All right, all right, I'm kidding. Kinda, but Linux just gets AI development. I mean, you've got more control over your environment, fewer weird background processes eating up your RAM, and let's be real, it just feels right. Plus, TensorFlow and PyTorch are Linux friendly, especially if you want to harness that sweet GPU acceleration for faster processing. Now, TensorFlow and PyTorch are two of the most popular frameworks for machine learning and AI. TensorFlow, backed by Google, is like the corporate world's go-to tool, all about scalability and high performance. Now, PyTorch, on the other hand, has that scrappy underdog energy. It's more flexible, easier to debug, and a lot of researchers and developers swear by it. And we'll talk about which one to choose when, but for today's video, you can set up either one depending on your needs. So hopefully you got that. Let's go on and hop into it. All right, so I'm logged into my Ubuntu system. I want to use something that a lot of Linux users are familiar with, which is Debian based or Ubuntu. So I'll start with just showing you guys how to do it on here, but it's pretty much the same no matter what distribution you're using. It may be just a little different with the commands in order to install certain software on the system. But let's start off by prepping our system. First up, let's make sure our Linux box is in tip top shape. So whether you're running Ubuntu or Fedora or even Arch, you know, and shout out to my Arch users out there. Y'all are some serious nerds, just like me. You need to have some basics in place and that's updating your system. So let's hop over to the terminal. I already have it open and I know you guys can't see this. It's kind of transparent and I did it. I don't know. I did that on purpose because I wanted to make this system look a little bit more set up how I would set it up if I had it on my laptop. And I like dark mode. I like seeing the transparent background in the terminal so I can see my background on the system if I want to, but let's go on and, and install our update. So the first thing you want to do is run sudo apps updates and type in your sudo password, press enter. That'll go through and check to see if we have any updates on the system. And it says four packages can be upgraded, but let's see, it may not upgrade those, I believe. Those are not needed at the moment. There are packages that can be removed from the system. So let me show you guys that command right fast as well, just to free up space on our virtual machine. But let's see, auto remove. And that's one good thing about the app package manager. It'll tell you what to do. It'll show you the command that you need to run. So sudo app to auto remove. Let's go down and do that. That'll free up 251 packages and about a terabyte of disk space will be free. Let's go down and do that right fast. It shouldn't take too long. And I'll be back when it finishes removing these packages. It shouldn't take too long. All right, so all those packages are removed on the system. And if you don't have Python installed yet, we definitely need to talk. Just kidding, but seriously, most machine learning frameworks are Python based. So let's get that sorted out as well. And it all depends on what distribution you're using. We are using Ubuntu, which is Debian based. And Python should automatically be installed on Ubuntu, but just to verify, you know, we can run through it right fast. But all you have to do is type sudo apt install and then Python 3. And also another package we need to install is pip for this. So let's type Python 3 dash pip and go down and install those packages on here if they're not installed. And it looks like pip had to be installed. So it's all good. We'll go through 
and wait for that to install as well. And while we wait for that to happen, let's open up another terminal. So let's open up another window and I'll minimize this one so you guys can see it a little better and we'll make this one a little bit bigger. And I just also wanted to show you guys how to install it if you're using, let's say for doors. And that's what I meant by earlier. If you're using a different distribution, it will use a different package manager. And for door base is DNF. So DNF install and then those same packages or the set package name. So Python 3 and then Python 3 pip. And then also if you're using Arch Linux. So we all know the Pac-Man package manager, but it still is Python, not Python 3. That'll install the latest version. And then Python dash that'll install version 3 as well, or the latest version of Python that's available on Arch Linux. Now, let me go ahead and close this out right fast and open up that other terminal back and see if we're finished. And looks like we're finished. Now, one thing you need to do is set up a virtual environment. That's why we need a pip installed. And then also the virtual environment is part of Python. If you install everything directly on your system, Python environment, you're asking for trouble because libraries will start clashing. And the next thing you know, your AI models crashing harder than Windows Vista. So let's avoid that mess by using virtual environment. So let's start off by creating the environment and I'll clear right fast in the terminal so you guys can See from the top, but all you have to do is type Python three and then dash M and then virtual environment. And then let's go on and create our AI underscore environment. And that'll be stored in your home directory. And it looks like virtual environment needs to be installed as well. So let's go on and do that right fast. I thought it was included with Python, but maybe not. So let's go on and type sudo apt install and it's Python three tech V E N V and press enter. I'm going to install a virtual environment for us. So let's go on and run the same command again. So Python 3-M virtual environment. And what we want to do is create that AI environment. So let's press enter. It'll go on and create our environment for us. And if we LS our home directory, LS stands for list. This will show us everything in our home directory. And as you can see, we have that AI underscore env directory that was created that's our virtual environment and within that directory that will be our little sandbox to install all our ai tools without messing up the rest of the system so let me show you guys the command to start our virtual environment so all you have to do is type source and then we need to go into that directory and under that directory there is a bin directory and then an activate binary file and if we press enter there that'll get us into our ai environment or a virtual environment that we set up and you'll know that you're in it by this being in front of your bash prompt. So let's go down clear now that we in our virtual environment. Like I said, this is almost like a sandbox and we can install all our AI tools. So let me show you guys how to install TensorFlow first. And all we have to do is use pip. Pip will install it for us. And you want to make sure you're in that virtual environment. Pip install. And then we need to install or we want to install TensorFlow. And that's essentially the command. So all we have to do is press enter there. And this will go through the process of installing TensorFlow. And we'll just, well, I'll just wait for this to finish and I'll come back. It normally takes a little time. And once you do it, you're good to go. All you have to do is check for updates every now and then. And then you, you're good to go. Now, like I said earlier, you have to decide if you want to roll with TensorFlow or PyTorch. You know, both are great. So all you have to do is pick your poison. But I'll show you guys how to get both of them installed and you can make the decision yourself. You don't have to install both. I'm just installing both just to show you guys. But I believe we are almost finished, but I'll come back in a second. All right. So we're good to go. Now, one thing I didn't think about before I started this video, we could create another virtual environment. So I'm going to deactivate this one that we have TensorFlow installed on and we'll create another virtual environment. And let's go on and uh, just press the up arrow and we'll name this one AI underscore torch and then underscore E N V and let's hold on press enter. That'll create that virtual environment for us as well. And then we can activate this one the same way by using our source command, show you guys how to have multiple virtual environments. Let's uh, go to the torch one and then Ben, it like it creates the exact same structure within the virtual environment in order you in order for you to activate it. Just make sure you're paying attention to the environment that you're in and that lets you know what you have installed within that virtual environment and let's go on and install torch so all we have to use is the pip command again so pip install and then the package name is torch and then there is some other options you can install so torch vision i recommend you put that in there if you're going to install torch install these other packages with it and then torch audio and let's go on and press enter and then it'll install all three of those packages for us 
within this virtual environment. And I just wanted to show you guys very right fast while it's installing. If you look at the Torch downloads, you'll see NVIDIA uh, in there as well. So those are packages that are included in there. So you'll be able to use your GPU. So just so you guys know. So we got Torch installed. And let me show you guys something else that you definitely want to have installed for your environment when you're building out. And that is, if we go under the Ubuntu software, we can search for VS Code. And you can install whichever version you want to. You can install the VS Code or the VS Codeium, which I recommend the Codeium because it's the open source version of it. This one is owned by Microsoft. You can install the Codeium version. So let's go down and install that right fast. And I'm showing you guys through here so you guys can see that you can install things, you know, via the installer. So we'll just wait for this to finish. Really, the next thing you want to open up Python and verify everything is working properly. And it's easy to just do that in because you can access your virtual environment from VS Code or VS Codeium. And that way you'll have access to all the tools that you have installed within your virtual environment. Okay, it looks like it's installed. We got our delete there. It'll delete it if we want to remove it from the system. But if you look into your system, you should have VS Codeium installed. And let's go down and open it up. And we have our Torch environment, you know, set up, fully set up. But once Codeium comes up, I'll show you guys how to access it. All right, cool. So we got VS Codeium installed and good to go. Basically, you can use the themes, whichever theme they recommend, or you can browse and get some other co color themes. It all depends on what works for you. Let's use the high contrast. Uh, I've never actually used that too much, so we'll use that just to see something a little bit different. One of the first things you need to do is install the extension for VS Codeium so we can recognize Python. So we're going to install that Python extension to our VS Codeium, and it's the same for VS Code. Now, if we type Control Shift P and Within here, you'll see Python select interpreter. I just wanted to verify that it was there. That's why it's showing up, but you should be able to see your virtual environment under there. And if it's not showing up, you could just refresh. As long as it's activated, it should be there. So all you have to do is click on it. That's a AI underscore torch underscore environment. Let's go down and create us a new file. And we want to create, say, Python file. And you don't even have to name it. We're just testing to verify that our environment is set up correctly. So this is Torch. So we're gonna type import and then Torch. And let's go down and print out our Torch version. And this is super simple or just something that's just show what we got here. So I forgot about our underscores. We gotta do that for sure. And let's go down and run it right fast. What you need to do is save it. You can save it within your Torch directory. One thing you could do within your virtual environment, you can create a scripts directory. That's something that I recommend. That's something that I've done in the past when I was trying to build out a setup. And then if we run it, that'll give us our error. And it looks like we don't have our, you mean Torch? Oh, I spelled it wrong. So spelled that wrong. I see where I put the wrong information here. I put a U in here. So let's go down and run it again. See what happens. And boom, there we go. So you'll see our version right there. Boom, no errors, nothing. And so that's just a simple way to test out our environment. First off, congrats on setting up your AI environment. You're officially one step closer to building some really cool stuff. Maybe the next deep fake generator, but like the ethical kind, or you might use it to create something that detects cat pictures because we all need more cat recognition software, right? But on a serious note, TensorFlow and PyTorch are powerful tools, and they're being used in everything from medical research to autonomous driving. And by setting this up, you're unlocking the ability to build models that could change the game in whatever field you're in. And the best part, you did it on Linux, the powerhouse of developers everywhere. Now, there's always debate over which is better, TensorFlow or PyTorch. Honestly, it depends on what you're doing. TensorFlow, in my opinion, has better support for deployment in production, while PyTorch feels more intuitive and is great for research. It's like choosing between a Swiss army knife and a scalpel. They both cut, but one might be better suited for a specific tasks. But in the end, pick whichever one makes sense for you. All right, guys, so that wraps up today's video. We've just set up a complete AI development environment on Linux using either TensorFlow or a PyTorch. And I hope you're feeling hyped to dive into the world of AI. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to keep it techie, and drop a comment down below. Let me know which framework you're going to roll with. And remember, my channel is all about getting people into tech and Linux. So if you're new here, welcome to the fam. And if you're already subscribed, you know I appreciate the love and support. Now, stay connected, stay coding, and of course, keep it techie.
piece. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.